Hello, my name is Carl Surrey and this is a video tutorial for the Facebook group called Fans of Serif Software and this tutorial will be for Affinity Photo on the PC um, and it's basically looking at perspective or a subtitle for this could be where's the deform tool um, because the majority of the people that, that start when I started the Facebook group fans of Serif Software Serif Software only made software for the PC and it was like Page Plus, Photo Plus, Web Plus so those of us who have been using Photo Plus um, and we are now having to sort of migrate over to Serif's new product, Affinity Design and Affinity Photo, both of which were Mac products and have now been sort of moved onto the PC market. Now, in Photo Plus, I, a long time ago, I did a tutorial looking at using the Deform tool and this was the image that I used in that tutorial because it does demonstrate how when you take a photograph, especially of buildings, they can sort of converge as you can see from this line up this building here, it's sort of leaning inwards and this post which should be straight is also leaning inwards and to help demonstrate this I did this image with the yellow lines on showing how they all sort of lean inwards and they are not straight. So in Photo Plus we used the Deform tool. So when we moved over to Affinity Photo people were going well where's the Deform tool? Um, and although it doesn't work in quite the same way as the deform tool, there is the perspective tool, um, which can be found down here. It's part of a sub menu. There's the mesh warp, mesh warp tool, and perspective tool. So let me just come off that a second. Didn't mean to click that just then. Now, before I go on, there is a deform tool sort of and it's in with the filters and it's distort and then deform now this doesn't work anything like the deform tool that was in photo plus in fact it's rather a weird tool altogether but you can with this tool, I still haven't quite mastered what it does completely, but if you click once like here at the top of this pole for example, and then click further down, so you've got two points, you can like you could twist the whole picture on the axis of that one there and this one here, but like I said it, it does move the whole picture. Or you could just put a single point over here, for example. Let me just lower this down. And you could just nudge this in a bit. It's not going to, oh, there we go. So the further I'm nudging this in, and you can increase how much it moves in with this slider which is not really deforming how I perceive the deform tool should work so I'll just cancel that and like I said I, I really don't fully understand what's going on with that tool um, or filter I should say so I will forget about that for now and like I said we are going to look at the perspective tool let me go back to this image here that I have with the lines on because then it's easier to show 
how it's working because you can see the lines. So if I click on perspective tool, it puts up this grid here, which you can turn on and off. And for this purpose, I'm going to turn it off. And what I will do is I will come up to view and click on show grids because these grids will sort of they will stay here and it's easier to show where they line up when I move one of these four corner nodes so what I'll do is we're looking at this pole here so I'm going to move this outwards to the left and as you can see that that yellow line that I drew is now in a straight line down that way but as you can see these these other lines have come a bit too far so I will just bring this back slightly it's more a case of getting it to look reasonably right with the eye as much as with using a grid so I'll just bring this side over so these four lines they're not perfectly in line with the grid but they are sort of almost getting there so yeah I can just tweak each side so if I turn those grids off for now and put this grid back on you can see how this grid didn't really wouldn't have been of much help because it stretched out as much as you've moved it which can be a bit distracting when you're trying to line up something so I personally think it's better to go with the grids that you can set up and they will sort of stay in position and it's easier to line up so although it is not 100% perfect I think that is almost in the right place. I may just move the bottom over slightly. Just bring that down a tad. No, I think I'll. So this is a case of trial and error and see what works and what doesn't work. Um, yes, I think I can. I will stick with that and I will click apply and then I will remove the grid. And I hope you can see that those lines are they're not perfect, like I said, but they are now a lot straighter than they were, and that is what the image looked like before I used the perspective tool and that is what I used ended up with after using it now depending on how you far you have to move in using this tool you may have like I have here an area where there are, it's now blank because I moved it in too far and I think there's a little bit over here as well but you could use the crop tool to just crop those images out that area out or if you're good at cloning I mean you could probably clone that in quite easily and possibly even that bit as far as my picture is concerned so that is a look at using the perspective tool from the tools menu down here Now the only problem with using this version of the perspective tool is that once you've used it and applied it it is no longer editable so there is another way there is a way around that if I go back to this first picture and I won't use the one with lines on this is now going to be done by eye but if you come up to um, layers new live filter layers and come down to perspective filter 
what that does is it adds a sort of a filter mask to the layer so this is going to and it works in exactly the same way as it did perspective tool over here so again and then we turn that grid off and turn that grid on so what, do, what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to also just shrink it down so I'm going to have to crop this when I finish to get rid of this area that I'm losing up here but that line there is now going down pretty much down where the line of that wall there and this pole is nearly straight just that's about there I think yes I think those vertical lines are pretty much straight and even that horizontal line of that fence is reasonably straight not perfect but reasonably straight but that's a lot better than it was now if I click the cross here this will stay as a editable filter or if I merge it it will go much like it did using this and it will merge into the background and can no longer be edited so what I'll do is I'll click the X and I will get rid of the grid for a second and hopefully if I've done this right if I double click this white thing here it will bring that back and you can edit it so if at some if you use it as a live filter you can come back and tweak it at a later date I mean probably not after I've cropped this let me just put that to the test this is not something I've actually tested myself yet but just move that to there and that there double click in the middle let me just double click in here oh yeah so even after I've cropped it I can tinker with the perspective as long as I haven't merged it just click the X and th that will remain there so that is two ways of using the perspective tool right okay now what I did but I've, I've just quickly saved that image that I used the perspective tool on and I've now reloaded it so it's now down to a single background layer and I just want to quickly touch on a different use of a perspective tool and this time it is found within the layers menu and it is live projection perspective projection which adds this grid over the image but this time when you move this it doesn't move the image all it does is move the grid and you need to place it over a certain area that you want to work on and this time I'm going to, I'm going to do it on this window so I'm just going to get it roughly in position then I'm going to zoom in so I can just tweak its position so it is where I want it to be that's good enough for what I I want it for I'll just press control and zero to zoom out again and I'm going to click on the move tool and what that will do it will put in that section as your main window and you can now do certain things to that section that you selected 
Now, the best way is to, you, in certain instances, I found that you can directly sort of paint or something onto this area, but it's probably best to do it on a new pixel layer. So you, let me come to the paintbrush tool and let me pick a red color. Nice red color. Opacity 100%, yes. So I'm just going to quickly, and I'm very sorry here that I'm going to be defacing a church image, but oh, that should be an M first car. There we go. So, and then what this does is, it will, although you're looking at this flat, when it comes back to putting it back into the image, it will move it into the perspective how you set it. So it, as it is at an angle on the building, this will end up looking slightly on an angle on the finished product um, image. So once you've done whatever it is you're going to do, you can, you need to merge down that layer and then click back on to the move tool and then this will bring up a button up here that says edit live projection and if you go back to layer live projection remove projection and then if I zoom in hopefully you can see that Mary Xmas, which I wrote on that window, and and you can see I uh, hope that it is in the same perspective as the way that the building sort of goes in that direction. Whereas if I if I tried to draw this directly onto this image without using that tool, the perspective would have been all wrong. Or I would have to have written a sort of a very small M and then made each letter slightly bigger as I went along. But this way, the tool does it for you. So that is a very quick look at that way of using the perspective tool. Right, and this next section, I'm just going to have a very quick look at using this sort of um, perspective tool, but in the, when you're editing a raw file. So I'll just quickly load that and then I will be back. All right, okay, now I have reloaded the raw version of that picture. Um, I've only done a few minor tweaks on the settings over here, which for the basic settings, just so it looks slightly better. I mean, this, I probably would have gone further with it but this is just a look at the perspective so I'm not going to go too mad with that. Now along here you've got different tabs and if you come to the second one which is lens you have some ways of altering the perspective. Now there is no grid on here but you can add a grid by coming up to the view menu and show grid which could be helpful when you're trying to just tweak this. Now the top one, I move it to the left. As you can see, it is sort of pinching it inwards. Whereas I think I need to be sort of maybe punching it outwards slightly. That's probably too far. Let's try the horizontal one. I need to go that way I think. Now as, as you can see this is a lot harder to do and may take a little bit of practice. Yeah, cause I've almost got that line straight there 
maybe not quite as straight on this side. Um, let's see if I can just use the horizontal to get that. Yes, it's, it's very hit and miss using this tool. Um, I'm going to leave it there for now and then you can use the scale just to zoom it out to lose these areas where the pixels are missing and I will just click develop and it will develop that raw file let me get rid of the grid here, we're going to leave the grid on you see that's not far off of being right, it is not perfect but it is nearer to what am I looking for? we're going to take the grid away that is a bit nearer to being straight than the original file that I did so you could then use a perspective tool just to tweak it a little bit more um, I think that tool in the raw um, studio is really good if you're, you sort of you can see what you're doing easily and you know what you're doing and it may take a lot of practice it's probably easier to process the raw file as it stands and then come to the perspective tools and alter it that way but either way I hope that there's four different ways you can use a perspective tool of some sort I hope this has been of some help and thank you for watching and goodbye